historical geology students. I hope you're doing well. It's the weekend. But this um, video, which is called Summer 14, is going to be for your lecture on June the 15th, a Monday. I have a couple more of these videos coming up. But um, what I wanted to focus on is get, getting you ready for the lab which will be this come do this coming Tuesday. I'll have the Ign your next lab, which is lab number four, Igneous Rocks Lab, ready by Monday morning at 9 a.m. at my house. And it won't be due until, um, <coughs> excuse me, the 16th on Tuesday at 5 p.m. And what we're going to do is we're going to identify igneous rocks. But besides identifying them, we also need to be able to fi figure out their texture and their color. We talked about that last time. In order to identify these rocks, you have to understand the texture. You also need to know, uh, by looking at the rock, is it plutonic or volcanic? And I'm going to try and guide you through that to make it easier for you. Let's start off by looking at this chart here. This is straight out of your textbook. This is probably one of the most important charts to understand when you're studying igneous rocks. And I'm hoping that you'll understand it like the back of your hand. In science, we love to use these types of diagrams. These are called bivariate diagrams. You've seen them a lot in high school, in your other college classes. If you took science classes, you always got a y-axis and an x-axis. And then uh, you try to interpret what the diagram is trying to show you. It's trying to show you in relationships between variables. You can use it to track the Dow Jones Industrial Average, or unemployment, or um, whether or not a certain medicine is going to work for a certain type of disease, or um, any two variables that you want to compare. And this one diagram happens to be for igneous rocks. On the y-axis, we have the volume of per the percentage of minerals. And uh, on the x-axis, we have weight of silica, percentage-wise. Percentage goes from 40 to 70 percent here, you can see. So igneous rocks have between 40 to 70 percent silica oxide in them. As you go from here to here, you have less silica inside of your igneous rocks. From here to here, you go from 70 to 40. As you go from here, you have 0% to 100% of certain minerals inside of your igneous rocks. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, that rocks are combinations of different minerals. So what this chart, one of these things that this chart is showing you is what types of minerals do we find in what types of igneous rocks? And here up here you can see the names of 10 different igneous rocks you can ignore these two because these are not that common and we're not uh, um, we're going to focus on these eight rhyolite andesite basalt camadeite granite diorite gabbro and peridotite. Those are the eight that you need to know. If you're going to be a geology major, you need to know these two, but we're just going to focus on these eight first, and then we'll take a look at a few other ones. What this diagram shows you is that you go from left to right, you have less silica in the rock. The less silica you have in the igneous rock, the more iron you have in the rock. Iron, F-E, iron, I-R-O-N. 
Another way of saying it is if you go from left to right, the num amount of iron in the rock increases. Remember this, the more iron in the igneous rock and the less silica, the darker the rock is. So the darker rocks are going to be on this side and the lighter rocks are going to be on this side. The in-between intermediate colors are going to be on this side. Okay, so darkness goes from left to right. So would the rocks over here be dark? Yes, they would be ultra dark or ultra mafic. So these two rocks here are ultra mafic. What color are they? Think back to my last video. What color do you think they, they would be if they're ultra dark? They'd be green. And so a green or ultra mafic volcanic igneous rock is called comatiite. If it's plutonic and it's ultramafic green, it's called peridotite. One of the igneous rocks you're going to be looking at in your la upcoming lab is peridotite. It has to be green in color and plutonic. Another thing you can actually read into this is a volcanic rock is a rock where the lava has cooled quickly. So the time, there hasn't been time enough for the crystals to grow large. In other words, volcanic rocks are affinitic rocks. Volcanic rocks are affinitic. They got crystals that are too small to see with the naked eye. All five of these have affinitic textures. Plut all plutonic rocks are phaneritic in texture. The crystals are, or almost all the crystals are visible to the naked eye. They have big crystals. So these five rocks here, which cooled underground, they're plutonic have phaneritic textures. Granite, diorite, gabbro, and peridotite. We're not going to worry about that one. So, um, make a note of this, because the, if you understand this chart, you understand quite a bit about said igneous rocks, a lot more than you did 10 minutes ago. A ultramafic rock contains a lot of the mineral olivine. You might remember olivine is green in color. That's why ultramafic rocks are green. Mafic rocks, you got two of them to, here, basalt and gabbro. They're going to be black in color. Why? Because the mineral is pure. The main mineral in basalt and gabbro is pyroxene, which is black in color. So basalt, a dark colored Igneous rock with small crystals is called basalt. It's volcanic. It cooled fast. That's, that's why the crystals didn't have time to grow. Gabbro is a mafic phaneritic rock. It cooled underground. Slow. Underground. It's plutonic. A light colored. You've got two light colored igneous rocks here, rhyolite and granite. What's the lightest color for igneous rocks? Pink. Look what rhyolite and granite have to make them pink. Orthoclase, also called potassium feldspar. You might remember that mineral is pink in color. If you have a pink colored igneous rock where the crystals are too small to see with the naked eye, it's got small crystals, it's called rhyolite. If you've got, and so these two are felsic. They are light in color. Granite, it's felsic also because it's pink in color. It's got orthoclase in it or potassium feldspar, some quartz in it, plagioclase feldspar, muscovite, biotite, and affable. It has all of these in it. But the pink in it is from orthoclase or potassium feldspar. So bottom line is this chart gives you a wealth of information. It's going to be your friend if you understand it. Plutonic rocks, granite, diorite, gabbro, peridotite have what kind of texture? Answer, even though I can't hear you. Because it, uh, but answer, what kind of texture would a plutonic rock have? 
phaneritic. It cooled underground. It's got big crystals in it. The volcanic rocks, are they going to have an aphanitic or phaneritic texture? Well, they've got small crystals in them. Therefore, they're going to be aphanitic in texture. These cool it above ground from rapidly cooling lava. As the lava erupts onto the surface of the earth, it cools quickly because it's exposed to all the cold, cold air at the surface of the earth. So one at a time before we move onwards. Rhyolite, aphanitic, and felsic. It's volcanic. It cooled fast. Granite, plutonic, felsic, phaneritic. It cooled slow underground. Diorite cooled slow underground. Gabbro, peridotite, they all cooled slow underground. They're phaneritic. Only difference is their color. This is ultramafic, peridotite. This is mafic, gabbro. And diorite's in, in between. It's intermediate in color. Basalt, it is aphanitic, it cooled fast above ground, it's iron rich, silicon poor, and it's volcanic. Andesite's intermediate in color, volcanic, it cooled fast above ground. Aphanitic, it's got crystals too small to see with the naked eye. It's going to take you some time before you can get used to it, but let me give you a little pop quiz here, and, and we'll do four of these and see if you can remember them. The first one is granite. Don't take it for granite. You gotta you gotta know this stuff. Okay, not granite countertops, but granite rocks. Even though granite countertops are made of granite, here's a typical granite. What's the color that stands out in your mind in your eyes? Pink. From the potassium feldspar, here you can see some quartz, smoky quartz, and these um, other ones in light white are, or beige are plagioclase feldspar. Are the crystals visible to the naked eye? Yeah, I can see them. I can see these individual crystals. So it's phaneritic. That means it cooled underground. It cooled slowly. Much of the Earth's continental crust is made of granite and diorite, which is an intermediate phaneritic rock. The continental crust is more felsic than the oceanic crust. The oceanic crust has more iron in it. That's why when oceanic lithosphere collides with continental lithosphere, the oceanic lithosphere subducts at a trench because the oceanic lithosphere has more iron in it. Iron makes it denser or heavier, and that's why it subducts. Let's take a look at another one. Basalt, B-A-S-A-L-T. Basalt, are the crystals visible to the naked eye? No. And for all you, all you French speakers, what's, how would you answer that? I'll teach you a word in French. Non. It, the crystals are too small to see with the naked eye. As soon as you see a rock like this, it, you should automatically know several things. Well, it's dark in color. That means it's mafic. That means it has a lot of iron in it. You should also know that the crystals are too small to see with the naked eye. So this is formed by volcanoes. And the lava that formed this basalt cooled so quickly that the crystals did not have time to grow big. Another thing you want to remember about basalt is that is what the ocean, the sea floor is made of basalt. And if you forget that, a good way to remember it is if you're an oceanographer and you swim down to the bottom or to the sea floor, if you're a scuba diver, and you look at the rocks, they're black in color. They're basalt. The 
the sea floor is made of basalt. Let's do another one here. Um, diorite. Diorite. What does diorite look like? Well, let's take a look here. Here's a typical diorite. Are the crystals visible to the naked eye? Sure they are. You got, you got these big horn blend crystals, and here you have some plagioclase in there. Is it dark or light in color? It's intermediate. It's got a mix of dark and light colored minerals. So it's intermediate in color. It's intermediate and it's phanaritic. Therefore, it has to be diorite. Did it cool? Is it plutonic or volcanic? It's plutonic because the crystals are visible to the naked eye. It's phanaritic. All plutonic rocks are phanaritic. They have big crystals in them. The continental crust is made of granite and diorite, more felsic rocks than the sea floor, which is basalt on top and gabbro beneath it. Gabbro, G-A-B-B-R-O. Here's a nice picture of a gabbro. G-A-B-B-R-O. I don't know. Oh, here it is. Okay. Take a look at this rock here. Is it mostly dark? Yes. So it's mafic. It's mostly dark mineral, so it's mafic. The crystal's visible to the naked eye? Yes. Therefore, it has a phanaritic texture. It's plutonic. It cooled slow underground, allowing for those big crystals to grow. It has a lot of iron in it. And that's what's underneath the seafloor. So the oceanic crust is basalt underlain by gabbro. Continental crust, You deep down you have a lot of diorite and granite. And on top of that, you get all kinds of other sedimentary rocks, limestone, chert, all, arcos, all the things you learned about before. So those are your main igneous rocks. However, not all igneous rocks are phanaritic or aphanitic. We also have our vesicular igneous rocks. Those are rocks that have air bubbles in them, like this one, scoria. S-C-O-R-I-A. It's got air bubbles in it. And as the magma rises to the surface, the air bubbles come out, and then there's a volcanic eruption. So scoria is made of frothy glass. It's glass with air bubbles in it. If, there's, if the rock is made of glass, you know it's volcanic, because... If a what happens to make a glassy rock is the lava cools so quickly that no minerals had time to grow. Instead, you only get glass. If you forget about that, think about how glass makers make glass. They melt sand and they quench it. They immediately cool it down to make glass so no crystals can grow. Crystal, mineral crystals need time to grow. So this rock did not cool just fast. It cooled immediately. Rock has glass like scoria, it cooled immediately. And this has a vesicular texture and it's dark in color, so it's called scoria. The other vesicular rock you need to know is pumice. P U M I C E. Pumice looks like this it's light in color. It's light in color, and it's vesicular. It's got air bubbles in it. It is volcanic. It cooled immediately. It has no minerals in it. It's made of glass. Another rock that you're going to look at in your box will be obsidian. Obsidian. And obsidian looks like this. It's made of glass. Glass. Volcanic glass. Usually black in color. 
but sometimes other colors, but usually black. No crystals in it. It's made of glass, so it cooled immediately. It's volcanic. The only plutonic rocks are the phanaritic ones. So, obsidian. The last texture, texture you need to learn about is called a porphyritic texture. And an example of that would be basalt porphyry. Here's a basalt porphyry. Notice it has these lighter crystals, which happen to be plagioclase feldspar, and it's got smaller crystals that you can't see. That's um, hornblende. A porphyritic texture means you have big crystals surrounded by little crystals. The big crystals happen to be called phenocrysts. And the black ones here are what we call the ground mass. But porphyritic igneous rocks have big crystals surrounded by little crystals. They are volcanic rocks. You might ask yourself, well, it must have taken time to grow these big crystals here. So, if for, And you're absolutely right. Those big crystals did cool underground. But then it erupted onto the surface of the earth, and then these darker crystals crystallized in between the phenocrysts. We call it basalt porphyry. Basalt is, is mafic, or dark in color, because we, we, we determine the color based on the smaller crystals, or the ground mass. An andesite porphyry would have an intermediate color, and then um, for, for the ground mass. So those are your igneous rocks. Basalt porphyry um, is also called porphyritic basalt because that's what the Brits call it. So don't get confused if you see this other word, porphyritic basalt. It's the same thing as what we call basalt porphyry. Andesite porphyry is called andesitic, a porphyritic, porphyritic andesite. By the Brits. So those are your igneous rocks. Each of these igneous rocks, which are phanaritic or aphanitic, you could tell what minerals are in there by just by using this chart. Diorite has plagioclase mostly and some biotite and affable. Affable is called hornblende. Before we move onwards, ultramafic means what? Very dark in color, green green because it has um, olivine in it. So here's a list here. Uh, you need this lab manual. If you haven't bought the lab manual, you got to buy it. We're going to be doing stuff straight out of the lab manual. You can go on the internet. You could take photographs of the rocks. But you're not going to get the answers right on the lab quiz if you take photographs of rocks. Because there's a variety of different looks and colors. You have to actually... Get, you have to get the textures. I've been doing this a long time, and people who just take photographs of the rocks and expect to do well on the quiz, it doesn't work that way. Uh, geologists wouldn't be getting paid the big money to do this if you could just take photographs of the rocks and then and somebody else gives you a photograph and you could figure it out. You need to look at the, figure out what the texture is. That'll tell you if it's, is it plutonic or volcanic and how fast did the rock cool. Phanaritic rocks cooled slow, aphanitic ones cooled fast, porphyritic ones cooled first slow and then fast, vesicular and glassy cooled immediately. Let's take a look at this pair of rocks here. What's the color that stands out most to you? Pink. So are the, these are felsic rocks. They're not found on the seafloor. Those are seafloor's mafic rocks. This is granite. It's got phanaritic. Here you can see the potassium feldspar crystals, hornblende, and quartz all mixed together in this plutonic rock that cooled slow underground. This rock here is pink, but the crystals are not visible to the naked eye. It's aphanitic. It cooled fast from a volcanic eruption. It doesn't have much iron in it. It does not have much iron. It has a lot of silica in it. These are intermediate in color. They're not dark, made of dark minerals or light. They're in between. 
Remember, light is pink. So this is not pink. So this is intermediate. Here you can see diorite. Crystals are visible to the naked eye. Some people call this the or crushed Oreo cookie rock or the Dalmatian rock or the salt and pepper rock because it's got dark horn blend and lighter plagioclase feldspar. It's phaneritic. Cool, slow, underground. It's plutonic. It's found in the continental crust. This is intermediate in color. Most There's a few big crystals, but almost all the crystals are, are too small to see with the naked eye. So it's intermediate in color. It's affinitic, so it's volcanic, and it cooled fast. Don't tell me you can't remember this. If I can remember, if the man who's drunk, a middle-aged guy who's drunk thousands of Miller Lights can remember this, you can remember it. This is volcanic. It's got small crystals in it. And it's called andesite. These are dark in color, but not green, so they're not ultramafic. And here the crystals are... This is almost affinitic, but it's got, you can still see the crystals, so it's phaneritic. Uh, it's plutonic. It's beneath the sea floor in the, in the oceanic crust. It's high, rich in iron. It's plutonic. This, this one is not a vesicular rock. It's getting close because it's got a lot of air bubbles. But a, a, vesic, a true vesicular rock is just filled with air bubbles. And this also has minerals in it, so it's basalt. It's vesicular basalt, but I, I, I'm not going to give you one of these because um, it, it's too confusing for someone's taking a first geology class. I'll give you a basalt that, a typical basalt, which looks like this. Dark in color. Affinitic. Don't forget that's what the sea floor is made of. Those are your main igneous rocks. Uh, I'll make another video next about talking about igneous rock bodies, also called plutons. But for now, I know you're not getting more geology and you're getting really depressed because I'm not going to continue this video on for 30 minutes and you're going to miss my face. So, um, you could increase your Prozac prescription to make up for it. Or, uh, another good antidepressant is Wellbutrin. Take uh, 10 doses of 200 milligrams so you don't get depressed because you don't see my face. Or uh, gin and tonic. That, that's another thing you try. I know they're selling meth in Oliver Springs. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Anyway, see you next time.